Next is the delta. And they tell us that it's called the delta because it's supposed to resemble a, a river in flood stage. And so that and the river deposits a lot of silt and it looks and it looks like a like a triangle. And that's where we get the word delta for the for that phenomena. Yeah. I don't know. I don't pay much much attention to rivers, but it, at least this is this is what a capital delta looks like. And again, it doesn't look anything like our English letter D. But that's the sound that it makes. The D makes the D sound as in dog. Lowercase is a little more familiar. You can at least see how someone maybe on on severe drugs could see that that looks like a letter D, right? Well, that's a delta. And again, this uh, curve at the top is exaggerated. You won't find it as, as extensive in many of the fonts that you read. The next letter is the epsilon. And again, we're helped out by the fact that English has, has borrowed this symbol uh, for its, one of its letters, the letter E. But this does not sound like E. This is epsilon, and it always has the E eh sound, or the, the short E sound. It never sounds like E, and it never sounds like A. It's always eh. Well, occasionally in a word, you might pronounce the epsilon like a schwa, like a schwa, the, the uh sound. Uh, like, for example, the, the, word in, in, the word for bishop is episkopos, begins with an epsilon. You know, we probably won't find anyone going out of the way to pronounce it episkopos. You know, you're, you're, uh, when usually also when the accent is on some other vowel, uh, the epsilon will have that uh sound. But most of the time as you look at it, especially in short words where the epsilon is the only vowel, it has the a eh sound. As in like pet? As in pet, yes. Now this little creature is the lowercase epsilon. You'll find also you have a different version of it in your handbook, in your workout book. And either of these options are recognized as the lowercase epsilon. In this particular font, it's a, it curves twice and then and then the Font you find uh, in your workbook, it, it uh, looks like a letter C with a slice with a with a uh, horizontal mark in the center. This is the letter Zeta. You pronounce this letter by pronouncing the letter D and the letter Z together. Z zeta. It's not just zeta, it's a, it's a zeta. It's how you pronounce it. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a number of, there's some <coughs> words that do have this combination of sounds in it, but, but a few, like the word adds. Um, combination of those two sounds. But that's the sound that, 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 that was made by this particular letter. Again, we're helped out by the fact that the English letter Z um, has borrowed this symbol to represent that sound. The lowercase looks slightly different. Well, okay, radically different. And this was one that you just have to memorize.
The next letter is deceptively familiar. This is the eta. Our English letter H has borrowed this symbol, represents that sound, but this is not the sound of the letter H. The eta is a vowel. It is a long A sound. So the eta is going, when you see this symbol, think A. Don't think H. It is always A. It is never pronounced E uh, or anything else. This is a. Uh, this one is found a great deal in in the New Testament. This sound, and uh, rarely, however, the in the transliterations of words, uh, names, for example, that are that are translated into a, into English, do we get this sound coming out? So. Uh, there's a there's a number of of, uh, uh, of words that we don't pronounce as closely as we, we could because we miss we, we see a letter e and pronounce it as we would an English letter e and not as an eta. The lowercase eta looks like a letter n that. It was kind of sloppy and kept going. Okay. And again, this is one you, you, you've got to look at and you've got to be careful that you don't uh, miss it and uh, mispronounce it. This is again that uh, the eta has the A sound. The lowercase eta. The next consonant is Theta, uh, represented by a circle with a with a horizontal line in between. Uh, oftentimes, in the fonts, you'll find that these these lines are um, are connected, like the lowercase here. This is the lowercase theta. Remember, it's pronounced theta. It is not pronounced theta. There is actually a, a, a distinction in sounds here. The theta is a soft th sound, not the hard the sound, as in the the uh, definite article the. It's theta. It's not theta. Like thin. Like thin. And not thick. Yeah, thin but not thick. Right. <laughs> okay. Next is the iota. Now I know that we have an English word called iota. And it's based on Greek. And when you're talking about not one iota, you know, that's it goes back to this fact that this Little, uh, this was a small Greek letter, and in English it's proper to pronounce it iota, but in Greek it is not. It's iota. In fact, this is the letter. This is the letter with the sound e. And occasionally, just like the letter i in English, it is pronounced i. There's are two possible sounds for the iota like the I in pit, or like the I in machine. 